Joining us now in the studio is Mana Mostatabi. She is a communications director with the National Iranian American Council. So a lot of accusations flying around, but despite who is behind this attack, what do you think is the main motivation or the intent behind it? And, and could we see more like this? Well, I think in order to determine motivation, you would have to determine the responsible party. And so as much as we want to move on from the whodunit game, we don't, I don't think we're able to do that yet. Um, what you are seeing and what we do know for sure is that the KSA and Trump are having somewhat different responses to it. Whereas Trump tweeted last night that we're locked and loaded and we're ready to you know, take our cue and essentially cede our foreign policy to the Saudis, the Saudis today have said, you know, there is no definitive evidence that this is Iran. And so it's not really a surprise that the country that would see the most fallout on their soil are the ones that are exercising the most restraint. And I don't think there was ever a day where we would see that the Saudis are exercising more restraint than the United States. Right, Pompeo is, is basically already coming out saying, hey, there is evidence, although he doesn't explain what that evidence mm -hmm. is, that uh, Iran is behind it. But why do you think the Saudi response has been so muted or, or really non-existent given the magnitude of, of what happened? because they don't want to go, it doesn't seem that they want to go to war either. They're, you know, the U.S. has a different agenda than the Saudi, uh, than the Saudis do. And so whatever war mongering that's been happening is driven by Pompeo and his pawns. And so we have to be looking at the U.S. motivation. I don't know the Saudi motivation. I don't know the Iranian motivation. But I do know that the Americans right now, despite Bolton being gone, still are agenda driven. And they are still looking to stoke conflict in the Middle East in a way that's not going to impact American soil. That said, Trump has already said, you know, we're willing to, like, you know, put some troops in. But the Saudis are going to have to pay. And we need to make it clear that war is not a business. We are, our armed service people are not paid mercenaries. And if the Saudis want to go to war, that's on them. But we should not be ceding our foreign policy decision making to any nation. What does this do to tensions that are already in the region um, with these parties involved? I mean, uh, we have this incident, it affected 5% of the global oil supply. Mm -hmm. What does this do, if anything? Well, it's inflammatory and it's inflaming re you know, a region that's already sort of almost at the brink. And the U.S. can easily walk this back. And Congress can start by reminding President Trump that he has no authorization to go to war with Iran and we are not legally obligated to defend the Saudis if they were, you know, if they're attacked. Um, we don't have UN support, we don't have allied support, and already there are measures in place, for example, a congressional mandate that required that the U.S. stop supporting Saudi-led efforts in Yemen. So the U.S. has a big role that it can play to de-escalate this. It's choosing not to, but the road to diplomacy is there. It's up to the Trump administration to take a hold of it. Speaking of diplomacy, we have the United Nations General Assembly mm -hmm. coming up in New York uh, just a few days away next week. Is there something more happening behind the scenes uh, along the diplomatic route? Could we see some sort of breakthrough? Well, um, it sort of depends. You've seen the French, um, President Macron, trying to broker uh, essentially what would be a, a bailout package for the Iranians. Uh, they would have to return to compliance with the Iran nuclear deal uh, in exchange for a bailout package that would essentially be a credit line that would allow them to sell oil. That said, this hinges on Trump allowing it to happen. So regardless of sort of this like cir circular, you know, we're going to put sanctions on their oil, but then consider a bailout package that the French are, you know, that the French are trying to implement. That, you know, if Trump really wants to make a difference, he'll let, he'll let that credit package fly. And, you know, maybe there's some back channels that can be explored at the UNGA. But as the Iranians say, apparently, that they don't want to have any talks until sanctions are lifted. If Iran is going to be in compliance with the Iran nuclear deal, the United States also has to return to compliance in order for any breakthroughs to be made. And we'll leave it there, Mana Mosta, to be. We appreciate your time. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for having me.